Hi, Andy Herringshaw with Tractor Innovations. Today I'm in North Plains, Oregon to show you the installation of a remote hydraulic kit on this Kubota L3300. This is from the era of tractors before they had quick couplers in the right spot. So we're gonna be attaching this remote hydraulic kit with uh, threaded fittings. Still a really easy install and absolutely the simplest and most affordable way to get remote hydraulics on your tractor. When you order this kit from me, it comes complete with the hoses, couplers, all the hardware, including brackets, everything you need to get a full set of remotes on your tractor. Today, we're gonna to be running these remotes to the rear to install a hydraulic top link. If you check out my website below, tractorinnovations.com, I sell the hydraulic top links as well. I also sell hydraulic side links, a lot of things to get more function out of your tractor. So today we will be running these remotes to the back of the tractor. I build this exact same kit if you want to run the remotes to the front of the tractor. You could have this kit running a grapple, auger, other implements on the front of the tractor, or really anything you dream up hooking up to the rear of the tractor. Stick with me, I'm going to show you all the steps to install this on your tractor. Be sure and hit like and subscribe to my channel to help other people find these videos and get more out of their tractor. If we look closely, this tractor does have quick couplers here underneath the floorboard, but they are in the wrong place. These are on the tractor side of the valve, so they give pressure, but there's no control. If I look here at the top of the loader control valve, the four hoses coming out to the loader, that's where I need to be tapping in. If I tap in on these hoses before the loader valve, we don't have the overpressure protection. We don't have the control that we need to control a hydraulic cylinder. The first step to installing this on your tractor is to install this bracket onto the loader valve mount itself. I've got a 14 millimeter wrench and I'm just gonna loosen these two bolts and then this bracket goes right on there. I'm gonna need a backer wrench as well, I believe at 14 millimeters. It's now time to mount the valve onto the bracket. So I've got the hardware, that's lock washers and washers here in my magnetic bowl. And I'll take this valve and just go ahead and unspool all the hoses, get it nice and laid out so we can make sense of it. And with the three foot hoses coming off the top, the longest hoses coming off the bottom, we're gonna just set this right onto this valve. I'm going to set it right onto the bracket. And I can put on a washer, lock washer, and nut onto each bolt. And I'll tighten that up with a half inch wrench. Now it's time to hook up the hydraulics from your loader circuit into this diverter valve. So you've got two long hoses coming off the top. These are gonna connect right back up here where the rubber hoses meet the steel lines on the loader arm. And the hoses that are here now are gonna curl back and connect right here to these input fittings going into the diverter valve. I'm gonna show you how I disconnect these two quick couplers. Now, before you disconnect anything on the loader, I want you to take your loader control and move it to all four positions to make sure there's no pressure in that loader. And that's with the engine off, of course. Relieve all that pressure so that loader can't move on you. So very little fluid should come out. And now take a look at these colors. I've got red and blue on a Kubota. That is your dump circuit. So your scoop and dump. White and yellow are the lift circuit. We're gonna be running these remotes to the back. So we're gonna be plugging into white and yellow. So I'm gonna take a 5 8 and 11 16 wrench and loosen this fitting right here. And to have enough room to work in here, I normally like to do these one at a time. So I would take this white one, connect it to the switching valve and completely do that hose before I move to the other. But there's not gonna be room to get in here with a wrench. So I'm gonna move the white one, move the yellow one, and then come back. And so here's my white hose that originally went to the connection on the loader arm. 
This white hose that's disconnected from the loader arm is going to connect right here to this threaded fitting. With the swivel fitting, they seal up internally, so we don't need thread seal tape and you don't need to crank these really, really tight. So when connecting these, put just a little bit of wrist strength in it, but do not put your whole arm into it. That's all it needs right there. All right, white hose is connected. That means when we go to connect the return line to the front, on the front set of fittings is going to be our white. The rear set of fittings is going to be our yellow. So let's go ahead and get the yellow off of the loader arm, and then we'll bring it back to this port. All right, I've got this hose loose and take your time as you move these hoses around. You can get a really neat hose routing and really get a professional looking install. All right, bring this hose down and around. We're gonna connect it to this other port right there on the switching valve. So we've got white in the front, yellow in the back. All right, I have the supply lines coming from the loader valve into these middle ports of the diverter valve. Now I'm gonna hook the returns back up to the loader. So I have these two medium length hoses. The longest hoses are coming out the bottom to go to the remotes. So these return hoses, I'm gonna route them neatly here and right up to the loader arm again. Since I had the white come in the front, this front hose out is gonna go back to white. In the rear is the yellow. And because yellow is harder to get to, I'm gonna hook up yellow first and then white. Now it's time to install the knob, so make sure you've got your lock washer on your knob there and thread it into the piston. You can tighten it by hand and you'll notice this piston will usually start to turn before it's fully tight. So with a pair of vice grips or other pliers, I can grab onto this piston, but not in here. This part has to slide into the, into the body, so definitely grab outside the circlip. I can grab onto that while I tighten the rest of the way with the knob. Okay, you should be able to pull that in and out now to activate the remote or deactivate the remote. With the supply and return lines to the loader valve connected, now I can run these remotes to their final location. If you're running them forward for a set of remotes to run a grapple, you'll bring them right here along the loader arm and we've got uh, zip ties. We can attach that to the existing hangers for these other um, hoses here. These hoses are going to the rear, so I'm going to find a neat routing under the tractor away from anything that moves or is hot. There's also the hydraulic oil filter under here. I like to get out of the way of that so when you're wrenching on that uh, later, you're not going to be running into these hoses. So take your time here, find a clean routing away from anything that could damage the hoses, and uh, you'll have a really professional looking install. Okay, I have the remotes run up inside of the rollover protection. This is a really good protected area and I've got those hoses nice and neat. So I'm gonna be looking for a location that I can mount this bracket. This end mounts to the tractor and then these quick couplers slide into this bracket using these U-bolts. So on the tractor side, I mount with any of these holes. I can also include a bracket that would attach it to your rollover protection with a set of bolts here. This tractor has a really nice little toolbox here with a couple bolt holes underneath it. So I'm just gonna go to that bolt hole and uh, attach this bracket right there. And the couplers can sit underneath it just like that. Let me get all my bolts. I've got them here in the magnetic tray. So that shorter bolt, one inch bolt, is going to attach this kit to the toolbox of the tractor.
Now we're ready to mount the quick couplers into this bracket. Take the U-bolt, slide it onto the coupler, and it slides right here into the bracket. I'll go on with a locking washer and nut. Do the same thing with the second remote. Finish tightening with a half inch wrench. All right, installation of the hydraulic kit is basically complete. But the last thing to do before you call it totally done is to grab one of your quick couplers that comes with the kit. It might be attached to a hose or something for your implement already. And make sure these connectors are able to connect. You just shove in to connect the quick coupler, pull out to disconnect. If we've got any sort of problem, it's often because the hoses in the back of these couplers have to slide about three eighths of an inch. And if you've got them bound up against something, they can't push in to uh, allow the coupler to grab. So just shove in with your coupler. It should slide in just like that. It's connected to disconnect, just pull. Test that with both couplers. All right, we are in and pull to disconnect. Those are working right. So let's install our hydraulic top link. We're gonna be removing this manual top link and installing the hydraulic top link. So to do that, make sure your three point is totally at rest, lower that down all the way, and you should be able to adjust this manual top link to get these pins loose. So go ahead and remove those pins. And remove the manual top link. And as we put on the new top link, this welded base end goes in towards the tractor. We'll slide that in first. All right, to finish connecting this, we don't have quite enough play in this uh, brush hog. So we will need to get on the tractor and use the hydraulics to extend this top link. When you do that, be extremely careful. Do not have your hands anywhere near the moving parts especially because with brand new hydraulics, there's air in here. Things can move a little more erratically with brand new hydraulics. They should be a little more reliable after you've run them, get all the air out. Go ahead and connect these connections and then we'll get on, fire up the tractor and move this out just about four inches and then we should be able to connect it well. All right, hydraulic top link is hooked into the tractor hydraulics and will move when I use the uh, switching valve. And if you don't like the way it's moving, I love to set them up so that when you're pulling back on the lever, it's pushing out on the top link, totally intuitive. If that's opposite of what you like, just swap these rear couplers and it'll change the way it operates. That's good right there. All right, the last step to really clean up this insulation is to take these hoses that are drooping under the tractor and zip tie them up out of the way so that everything's safe and nothing is rubbing. Well, there you have it. The absolute most affordable and simplest way to get hydraulic remotes on your tractor. Today on a Kubota L3300 with the older loader without quick couplers, but I build these kits for all sorts of tractors, older, newer, quick couplers, threaded, anything out there. Um, I can help you get a set of remotes on your tractor. So with this installation, a simple pull and push of this knob is going to activate the remotes. Today it was rear remotes for this hydraulic top link, but this can also run a grapple or other implement on your tractor. All right, let me show you how this kit works. I've got the knob pushed in right now, which means I get totally normal loader function. I have lift function and dump function. Of course, with the engine off, I'm only gonna get things that move down. So when I pull out on the knob and wanna run my hydraulic remote, now my lift function is frozen in place on the tractor and up and down movement on the loader lever is gonna control my top link. Let me start the engine and show you that with the engine on. We'll start with the knob in for totally normal loader function. With my knob in, I can lift, I can dump, I can do all the normal things with my loader. And when I'm ready to activate my remote, pull out on it and 
I have control of the hydraulic top link. If I'm done working on the rear, want to go back to my loader, just push in on the loader lever and I've got complete control again. With this incredibly simple diverter valve system, you can add a set of remotes to the front of your tractor or rear of your tractor today on a Kubota, but I build these for all makes and models. Thanks for watching and let me know how I can help you with your tractor.